Here is the recap of the first season of Constellation. The series is incredibly complicated and some moments happen, not just in parallel. The authors deliberately make it so that we do not understand when and what we are shown. So for your convenience, I will tell everything in right order. The main character named Joe is an astronaut on the International Space Station. She communicates with her daughter via satellite internet in Swedish. Both of them know the language as her mother is from there. Suddenly there is an accident as something crashes into the station. The other astronauts manage to put out the fire, but their captain named Paul dies. Joe goes into outer space to find out what collided with them and discovers a female corpse in a USSR spacesuit. However, the body flies off into space and no one else manages to see it. The communications center reports that the station must be abandoned. The three astronauts board the Soyuz and descend to Earth. And Joe has to fix the second spaceship in 24 hours and manage to leave the station while she still has oxygen. Henry, the head of the NASA research mission, requires Joe to bring with her a certain device, which was activated by her late colleague Paul before the accident. Though the experiment was interrupted, the Earth managed to record data that could overturn all of humanity's knowledge of modern physics. Even though Joe has heard nothing about the device before, she picks it up and also loads Paul's body onto the Soyuz. But suddenly the connection with the ground is lost and Joe is not sure that she can calculate the trajectory of the spaceship landing. While the woman is engaged in repairs, she begins to see and hear various hallucinations. For example, the voice of the dead Paul, and after a while touching his severed hand for a second sees him alive. Also at some point she finds herself in an ordinary corridor, where she sees a closet from which someone is trying to get out. After 24 hours, Joe manages to repair the Soyuz, but undocking is impossible due to a broken fastener. It can only be repaired from the outside and Joe thinks she is doomed as suddenly undocking occurs and Joe sees a silhouette on the station. Which of course is impossible, as there is no one else left on the International Space Station. Joe lands on Earth, where she is met by her husband Magnus and daughter Alice. Joe immediately begins to notice strange things her daughter doesn't speak Swedish, her car is a different color, and there is a piano in the living room that she suddenly knows how to play. The hallucinations on Earth go nowhere. She sees the dead Paul, as well as the very same closet and her daughter Alice, for some reason, also sees strange things. For example, as someone tramples her favorite stuffed toy, as well as her mother's funeral and even herself at it. On top of that, it turns out the girl started hiding in the closet some time ago. Soon at the mission debriefing, Joe still claims to have seen the corpse of a woman in a USSR costume, but command informs her that no female cosmonaut has ever died in space in the entire history of the Soviet Union. Management questions Joe's mental health, so the psychiatrist prescribes her a harsh antidepressant lithium. The woman does not think she is crazy and does not want to take the pills, and soon notices that the medication looks a lot like the vitamins she was given right after she landed. Joe goes to the NASA lab and has the two drugs analyzed. They turn out to be identical, and Joe realizes that the management is deliberately feeding her strong tranquilizers, however she doesn't understand why. She decides to look through the records of who else has been given similar vitamins and discovers that the lithium is given to Henry, the head of NASA's research mission. He's the one who asked to retrieve a mysterious device from the station. It turns out that the man has also been in space, and then there was a disaster, but Henry saved everyone and came back a hero. Suddenly, the janitors enter the room, but for some reason they don't see Joe, and when she touches them, they instantly disappear. Soon, Joe receives a package of tapes from some European observatory. On them, she hears her own conversations from space. However, the command claimed they were not picking up her signal. She also finds a transcript of another tape where the voice of a dying female astronaut from the USSR was heard. This contradicts the words that there were no women dying in space. Joe concludes that the leadership is trying to make her look crazy, but still doesn't understand why. Meanwhile, Henry, having received his device, discovers that for some inexplicable reason it sometimes produces the results he needs which by idea should have appeared only in space. He is unable to capture them, and his colleagues question his mental state. However, he believes that the observer effect is to blame. I won't go into detail about what Henry is studying, but for simplicity's sake, I'll tell you. It has to do with parallel universes. Meanwhile, Joe discovers that in the past she cheated on her husband with her boss Frederick, but she has no memory of it at all. Soon, on the basis of all the events Joe fights with Magnus, during the confrontation, the woman accidentally pushes him and he loses consciousness. 
The woman realizes that she is likely to be sent to a mental institution, but she wants to find out what is going on. She takes Alice and goes to a NASA lab where she steals the device as she realizes it has something to do with all of this. Along the way, Alice tells her that she occasionally hears the indecipherable mumbling of a woman flying in space. The mother asks the girl to draw this woman and Alice shows a drawing of a person in a USSR spacesuit. Joe and Alice go to the observatory from which the tapes were sent to her. There she meets two elderly radio amateurs who tell her that for years they have been receiving strange signals from space, called ghost tapes. They can only be heard in certain places, like this observatory. On the recordings you can only hear noise at first, but eventually you get used to it and start to make out certain words. Usually they're from people who have died in space or had some kind of accident. Joe doesn't believe the old people's words at first, but in the car she inserts one of the tapes into a record player and when she brings it to the device, she hears the intelligible voice of a female cosmonaut from the USSR who dies during her mission. Joe, along with Alice, travels to Sweden to their country house. As the girl falls asleep, Joe begins to hear her voice from the street and travels to the other side of the frozen lake. In the abandoned house, she discovers a closet in which her cold daughter sits. She brings her home and tries to warm her in the bathtub. However, at that moment, Alice wakes up and it turns out that there is no second daughter. Here's where we need to make a little digression. Throughout the season, we saw some moments that didn't fit into the overall narrative, and now I'm going to tell you more about them. We were constantly shown like two different Henrys. One is a scientist and the other is an alcoholic. It turns out they are in different universes and can communicate. In the second universe, Henry, I'll call him Bud, didn't become a respected astronaut or scientist. Although he saved his colleagues during an incident in space, he moved to a parallel universe where the other Henry failed. After that, his career was put on hold. He became an alcoholic and earns money by attending various scientific conferences. One day he had an argument with one of the visitors and threw him off the ship. But the police found no evidence. The camera footage seems to have been erased. As you can see, the alcoholic Bud is jealous of the scientist Henry, because in that universe he is a respected astronaut. So Bud is going to take revenge on his copy and even learned how to influence Henry. For example, he made the old man wet himself in front of his coworker. Now that you know about the two universes, you can understand what the numbers are in the upper right corner. When it comes to the first universe, it's number one. When it's the second universe, it's number two. Let's go back in time a little bit. In the first universe, Paul is working on the device. When he launches it, there is an accident. Paul and Joe switch universes. And we learned that in the second universe, where Paul went, there was no device at first. The man survives here, but Joe on the contrary dies. Further, everything is the same as in the first universe, but here Paul tries to fix the union and see strange hallucinations. But we now know that the main characters actually just sometimes saw and heard another universe. As Paul fixes the Soyuz and prepares to undock, his mounts also jam and surprisingly someone from the outside helps him. The man like Joe from the other universe sees a human figure on the station. Magnus and Alice are burying Joe. For the record, Paul didn't bring the woman's body back from space, which makes the girl even more anxious. She stomps her favorite stuffed toy and at the funeral sees herself descending from the second floor. This is exactly the moment her copy from the other universe saw her. Her father decides to distract his daughter and offers to go on vacation, to which Alice replies that she wants to go to Sweden to their country house. There she begins to hear the voice of her mother and goes in search of her. The girl soon finds an abandoned cottage and climbs into a closet, where she is discovered by Joe from the first universe. Her mother takes her home and warms her up in the bathtub, but suddenly Alice is transported back to her universe. Meanwhile, arriving on Earth, Paul sees inconsistencies in the world around him, as well as various hallucinations, not realizing that another universe exists. Soon he learns that the device on the station never existed, and the scientist who created it, Henry, does not work at NASA at all. Paul goes in search of him, and when he finds him, Bud tries to drive him away and shoots the man. Further events will run parallel in the first and second universe. So pay attention. In the first universe, Joe realizes that she is in another universe. Together with Alice, she goes to look for the second Alice, the one she found in the closet earlier. At the same time, Alice from the second universe is also trying to find her mother. Both girls reach an abandoned house and find themselves in like third and fourth universe, where the mother from the first universe and the father from the second universe cannot find them. 
A fire starts in the building and Joe does open the closet door, but there she finds Alice not from her original universe. However, with the help of an old record player, she manages to communicate with her real daughter. Meanwhile, in the first universe, the police arrive at the frozen lake with Magnus and Henry. While Magnus tries to find his wife and child, Henry wants to find his device. However, the old man is the first to spot the burning house and opens the door. Just at that moment, in the second universe, Bud shoots Paul. Suddenly, Bud and Henry switch places. A confused Bud helps pull Alice out of the burning building, and then the police arrive with Magnus. Joe is sent to an asylum, where she is treated by former astronaut Irina Valentina Lysenko. Suddenly, Joe realizes that Irina is that dead astronaut from the USSR, only it is her copy from the first universe, which did not die in space. At this time, Bud finds the device and destroys it, informing his colleagues that Joe did it. He then meets with Irina and tells her about the other universe. The old man doesn't want him and Henry to switch back and asks Irina if lithium will help him with that. Joe discovers she is pregnant and on the ultrasound we see the same patterns that the device showed. Soon Joe discovers another resident of the asylum, peeks into his room, and sees exactly two identical crazy old men. Joe asks Arena about the couple, to which the older woman replies, There is only one man in that room, and he is the first man to be in space. Arena, having heard about the other universes from Joe and Bud, goes to her office. She writes a letter to all the astronauts. In it, Arena tells them that her job was to hide the fact that sometimes people go crazy when they return from space. If any of the astronauts have experienced similar symptoms, she asks them to anonymously report it to her. Meanwhile, although Joe doesn't think she's crazy, she agrees to undergo treatment. After a while, she is discharged and returns home with Alice and Magnus. Meanwhile, in the second universe, Alice accepts the fact that her mother is dead and together with her father, they move out of their home. A little earlier in the second universe, Henry finds himself near Paul, who has just been shot by Bud. The old man calls an ambulance and the man is taken to the hospital, where Paul soon regains consciousness. The police arrest Henry and charge him with the death of the man on the ship, as well as the attempted murder of Paul. Henry tells them about his device and that he has switched universes. He even passes a polygraph, but the police still don't believe him, thinking he's crazy. Meanwhile, we are shown the International Space Station, where Joe, without part of her face, comes to her senses. This is the end of the first season. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the like button. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.